Sabrina Sartori from the University of Oslo. It is a pleasure to introduce uh, to all of you Susan Trollier McKinstry from the Pennsylvania State University. Thank you for being with us. So Susan, it is a common practice in the scientific community to assess the quality of a journal and of a scientist based on uh, metrics uh, such as the impact factor mm -hmm. and the Hirsch factor. So in your view, what are the pros and cons of uh, such indicators of scientific productivity? I think it's really critical for the scientific community to look not just at impact factor, but at the actual impact that particular publications or particular articles have on the state of the field. Have they really advanced the state of the field? Have they made a change relative to our previous knowledge of the literature? I think impact factor is one imperfect way of assessing that. So papers which tell complete stories so that you can understand from a single paper what was done and what the implications of that were is much more valuable than many incremental publications in a field. I think the race to publish can lead to judgments that maybe if you had taken time and collected a little more data would have provided a much more complete story. Uh, the reality is once a paper's in the literature, I can guarantee you that my students will find it. And if it's published really before it ought to have been or without some of the filters in place, that means I may spend the next 30 years having to provide the perspective on why I think this particular paper is incomplete. So and this can be a sort of a trap uh, also for a young researcher to maybe publish a trendy topic yes. instead of doing grand research Absolutely. and, uh, and, uh, and solid I think, work. I think it's far more important to do work with lasting impact mm -hmm. than work that will be a flash in the pan mm -hmm. um, that you ultimately won't be proud of. Well, I don't know if there's such a problem uh, between fields because there aren't that many journals that deal with multi areas mm -hmm. that deal from, from medicine to biology to physics to chemistry. Uh, those are the ones that I, I guess may specialize towards a particular, particular field, but are probably very conscious that they want to keep the diversity. So in terms of materials publications, I mean, we have so many uh, dedicated journals to materials, that is not an issue, I mm. think. But within the field of materials, undoubtedly, you know, there's a huge drive towards, I mean, journals, their uh, success currently is, is measured in many ways by their impact factor. Mm -hmm. um, they want to get the highest impact factor they can, so they pick topics or favor topics mm -hmm. that's going to do that. You know, maybe large areas such as MOFs, if you have a good paper in that area, it can get hundreds of citations. The that's same with things like perovskites, yeah. which is a particularly hot topic at the moment. And if I were leading these journals, and I was being measured on what my impact factor was, I think I'd be doing the same thing, really. But undoubtedly, it is, it is limiting the variety of science that's being published. And if we're looking for emerging areas, you know, this is not going to help publication of those. It's not going to help us identify what the not next topics maybe, are. Maybe we need to find another way to evaluate the quality of research and not only have uh, the index factor, for instance. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> this depends on which journals you talk about. There are certain journals that are highly influential because they have what's called so-called high impact factors and we tend to look at them more than at others. And they definitely in part steer science rather than being steered by science and that's a problem. Um, then there's the vast majority of journals that will be less steered by um, by science because by pure science because of the existence of fashion mm -hmm. also in science we have fashion if you do brilliant work and you want to publish it in a high quality journal but it is completely out of fashion it's something that people may consider old-fashioned it will be very hard to publish the publishing business is problematic because it has become uh, 
too influential and not necessarily by their own choice. I will quote the former editor of Nature. John Maddox was for, I think, over a decade editor of Nature, and he once came to the Weizmann and he gave a talk. He was a very good speaker. And at one point he said, I know that there is a lot of criticism about publishing in our journals. But it's not us, the editors, that make the decision that whether or not you publish in our journal tells whether you're a top scientist and deserve tenure. And therefore, we can blame the journals, but it comes back to ourselves, the scientists. Mm -hmm. Until we have a better way, a better metric of uh, who's working and who's doing good research and who's not, publications, I think, will have to be um, the most important metric we have. So especially how these publications are greeted by the public, and, you know, by the consumers of the information. Uh, unfortunately, uh, citations is not the best way to do it, but it's the thing that you can easily, you know, measure. And so people uh, publish a lot of papers. Many of them are um, uh, duplication to some extent of things that have already been published. This is being driven by the, by the major publication houses because there are so many uh, uh, scholarly journals and they keep coming up and so they're always looking for new articles to publish. So it's a bit of a problem. I see it as a problem. It, 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 it necessarily leads to uh, low quality publications in some cases. I don't, know, I don't know if there's any real solution to that. I like the idea of uh, having a, a, a wiki not a wiki, but like a crowdsourced, a crowdsourced approach to publication. You don't need a publication house. You just need, you almost don't need a publisher. You need a website. You put your work out there in, the, in, a, in a final form of some publication. And you allow the, um, the knowledgeable public to critique your work. Mm -hmm. it, uh, and, then, and then you could have some uh, board, some overseeing board who uh, looks at the critiques and decides whether, the, the, whether this paper has gotten a fair review or enough of a review to merit staying on the website and being now called a publication or being removed or put someplace else. But it's very hard to get reviewers the way we currently do it. And, and even some top journals only have one reviewer for an article. That leads to a, one, a very one-sided situation. If publications were crowdsourced and, and the people that were really interested in that subject could comment on it, if you had enough of those reviews, you would eventually uh, come to the correct conclusion about the value of a paper. Mm -hmm. I think we have too many publications and, and we need a better metric so that we don't keep driving publications um, uh, and creating more journals. We need a better way of judging the, the, the quality of somebody's work. And continuing about uh, publications, because the, of the different number of citations per paper in different fields, editors seem to be under pressure to move to the fields with larger numbers. For example, a biology-oriented paper, in average, has six times more citations than a paper in the field of materials. How can we stop citation number-driven drift of journals away from the field of materials? Hmm. Get more readers. <laughs> Uh, it's, <laughs> I, I, and this is a very big subject, but I, I think that the Materials Research Society in general has widened the boundaries of material science to, you know, to um, have very, very good interactions in the biofield, 
in the, um, in, in, the, in the physics field, in the device field, in all kinds of different, especially in chem chemistry. And so what we think today of material science is not what we thought of it 25 years ago. Now it's a much, much broader field. So we should not be surprised when biologists claim some of our money and some of our credit and some of our readership because uh, we've created that situation, uh, which is good. But I, I, I think that you then can't complain that, a bi that the publishers are, are, are you know, preferentially publishing the bio papers because that's where the money is and that's where the readership is. Uh, we have to continually um, be publishing articles that will capture the attention of a large number of readers. And if we had fewer journals, then the public would be less fractal, would be, the reading public would be less divided among the journals, and then publishers could make money. Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't ha we wouldn't have this argument. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's too dilute. It's, yeah. too, it's too diluted, mm -hmm. I think. Oh, I think it's tremendously limiting. And it's a system that I think is about to break, right? I mean, whether it's going to break in five years or 10 years, I don't know. But, but it's, um, I mean, it, it, it's unattainable, right? This, mm -hmm. this idea that uh, you can make the magic formula of I have all these papers with such impact factor, I'm going to add that up. And I think it's probably a reflection of that, um, you know, institutions, whether it's academic institutions or government agencies are starting having a hard time with the field because it's so broad and how to evaluate it, right? You know, when everybody was a metallurgist mm -hmm. uh, or everybody was a polymer chemist, people knew the field, they knew what was good, what was not so good. The field is now so broad that I think, unfortunately, people have retreated to these numerical measures that have very little to do with the quality of the impact, right? And, and we see it in our students all the time, right? They go like, ah, I want to publish there. And I go like, well, that's not the right journal. Yeah, but it has a higher impact factor. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's, um, it's really limiting. I, I think it also means that um, I think journals, like you say, sometimes look at papers. And, and if you think about it, right, for a journal, it's now better to accept a paper in an established field. Uh, because if the field is big, it will get a lot of citations. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, uh, what's going to happen with this person who comes with the new thing, right? I'm sure that the editors look at that and like, you know, that might be good, but who's going to cite this? It's a totally new field. But yeah. you're going to miss the paper that sets totally new directions, right? And people have occasionally looked at this, right? There are some papers that have made tremendous impact are called sleeper papers, right? Yeah. They sit around for five or 10 years, um, and then suddenly everybody realizes their value. But by the way, that would have counted zero in the impact factor, right? Because yeah. the impact factor is based on two years. It's a, it's, yeah. a, it's a ludicrous idea. And one can ask how much this sort of pure paper publishing, um, how long that's going to be our main product, right? I think what in the end is going to do us in is the young people, right? The young people will come up with new channels of distributing information. And I think ultimately they will come up with new channels for evaluating their peers' performance. And I think if, if we don't ride ahead of that curve, I think they'll change it for us, right, at some point. So I think it's all of our responsibilities as scientists to read papers critically and not to presume that what we read is um, perfectly understood, is perfectly interpreted. Uh, and so I think we all need to read with quality filters on. And that includes um, both reading as a referee, and it's much more important to the state of the field to ask important questions, have the authors address those important questions so that when the paper one finally published has a more lasting value, more it will ultimately have more importance mm -hmm. if we address those questions early. Um, yes, it's onerous. It's not always a joy to get the review that says, please think about this. But ultimately, it's better. It produces a better outcome. Mm -hmm. I think. It